Um, so hi, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Valeria Contreras and I'm the Advocacy Director for A Plus Colorado. And with me is my friend, Juliet. Hello everyone, my name is Juliet Siebold and I am the District Program Associate with Democrats for Education Reform, also known as DFER. And with us today, we have Ariel and Nick from 10, um, and we'll let them introduce themselves. Okay, I'll go. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ariel Smith. I'm the co-founder of Transform Education Now, or 10. Uh, we work with families across the metro area and, and have been supporting them through, um, normally, their students' academics and uh, ask, helping them advocate for high quality schools. And now we're supporting families through a lot of the COVID-19 uh, public health crisis response stuff. Hi everybody, uh, Nicholas Martinez, uh, co-founder of Transform Education Now out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, we work across multiple districts, organizing families, doing leadership development and parent community work. Uh, again, to make sure that every child has access to a high quality educational experience, regardless of whether that is remote at home with their parents or whether that is in their local school. Awesome, awesome. Well, Nicholas and Ariel, we want to thank you both so much for coming on and agreeing to do this interview with you. Um, I can speak for myself and Valeria at A+, that although we don't support families directly, we, we really do appreciate the partnership that we have with our community-facing organizations, and we're very grateful for um, all that you're doing in supporting our families and our students, and we just want to let everyone know that you can go on 210's website, which is transformeducationnow.org to see the wonderful work that they're doing, but to also show your support um, and get some resources, especially during this time. So thank you again, you both, and we're very excited to hear about the amazing stuff that you do. Thank you. Thanks for having us. We're excited to talk about it. Yay, and with that, I'll ask the first question, and that is, how did your organization shift your work after the quarantine was announced? Yeah, so we are really lucky to have a, like a very large um, community that we work with at 10. And so when uh, things started getting um, uncertain and changing, we uh, were a resource that many families sought out uh, to ask questions and to find out more information about where they could get access to resources, food, technology support. Um, and so we had to really react quickly to that. So we built a resource page that our families have been using. Um, but in addition to that, we've had a lot of families who are just feeling really isolated right now um, because this is a moment of uncertainty where families are just like, what am I going to do? I have to keep my student at home for the next 10 weeks um, doing learning with them. And I think that's really daunting for families. And so we have set up a couple of different online communities to help support families. I think one of the one of the hardest shifts is our work is naturally based in person to person relationships. We are relational organizers. Um, so that means spending time with people that means connecting with folks over what matters to them the most uh, their children. And I think this has created an opportunity or a challenge for us to continue those relationships and deepen those relationships without being able to connect with people face to face. Um, our team works pretty quickly, like Ariel said, to to bring together a number of resources. I think one of the great parts, and, and this speaks to the leadership of our city and our state, is there were a ton of resources put out immediately, um, but one of the challenges was like, they were coming from every, which, every direction, um, and, and folks were just being overwhelmed with information, and so what our team tried to do was put those all in one central location, a place that families were already accessing you know, our information, and say this is what's available, whether it has to do with schools or not. Um, and then we transition to a place where we can build and maintain and, and grow these relationships in a digital space, uh, creating some online tools, some online spaces for families to not only get resources, support, information, and help, but to, to, to get a, a sense of community, to get a sense of socializing. I think the hardest part for many of us in quarantine is being isolated of, from anybody else, right? Whether that's our families, whether that's our parents, um, just our neighbors and friends. And so these spaces are becoming a place where families are able to connect with each other, to, to lessen that feeling of isolation, which is you know, ever present in this moment. Right, thank you both so much for answering that. And I think during, especially during this time, there's on one end of the spectrum, there's isolation, 
but also on the other end, there's like that deep root of connectedness between communities. Um, and we're seeing that based on the relationship you've cultivated with families over the years. Um, what I want to know is based on those relationships and the trust you built, what are some of the challenges that your parents are currently facing um, with schools being out? Like what are some of the concerns that they're expressing to you guys? Well, I, I think one of the big ones, right, is, is pretty obvious. Basic needs, basic resources. You know, families, the families we serve are predominantly Latino, predominantly African-American, predominantly free and reduced lunch and need support getting basic services. And, and in a time of remote learning, that also means technology, that means access to uh, internet, uh, but it also means food. And so we are partnering with folks across the city to make sure that families have what they need, whether that's computers. You know, Ariel just did a, a drop off of about 25 computers yesterday um, to families who were unable to receive them from their local school. Uh, we're sending out food as, as often as possible, uh, partnering with the Denver Metro Emergency Response Network. Uh, I also think that like in terms of like academics and school, families need support, right? They are, they are ready. They're ready to take on the challenge. They are ready to support their own child and to make sure that their kids have what they need, but they need help, right? A lot of us are not trained educators who have been doing this for years. This is brand new for a lot of us. Um, and so our families need some support, um, technical support, getting online, getting into Google Classroom, but also, you know, pedagogy support like how do I how do I identify where my child is currently at and what they need and you know something that they've raised is how do I know how to support my child in the way that they learn best right mm -hmm. some of us don't learn really well staring at a computer all day I know when I was in college online courses were really really hard so this is an opportunity for families to kind of really serve their students in the best way their student needs to be served and I think they need some support there that's one of the things that we're trying to trying to meet one of the things that I think is going to be really interesting for families in the next 10 weeks is that this is the first time that they've ever been this close and spent this much time with their learner. Um, and so I think that there's a tremendous opportunity for families to one, become better partners with their schools and with their teachers um, and be more aware of where their students are and where they need to go um, in terms of their academics, right? Like uh, a lot of the, the questions we've gotten from families so far on our calls is like, how do I know where my student is right now? Like, how do I, like, when you go on like a new Zila, which is like a reading site that you can go on, one of the first questions is, what level does your student read at? And a lot of our families are like, well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's been something that's been um, sort of an eye opener for families. Like, I've got to learn where my student is. And I've got to figure out how to support them and move them toward the outcomes that they need to accomplish every year. So I think it's an interesting moment for families to be collaborating because it's a moment where they're really um, setting their own common expectations around what their student deserves and what their student needs. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, that's really good work that you all are doing. Um, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but is there anything else that you want to share as far as how you're able to support your families? Um, I know you all had a resource list. Um, anything else that you all want to share right now? So we're doing a couple of things. Um, the first that I want to mention is we have created a Slack channel. Uh, we utilize Slack internally for our team and, and recognize that it could be expanded and opened up uh, to families and community as a way for them to communicate with each other. Uh, it's also a really good resource because families are able to you know, share the things that they're doing. Um, the schedules that they're putting together at home uh, that they are kind of building with their children and the, some of the resources they're using, they're able to share that with community members as well. Uh, we are sharing, you know, resources as we come across them. Uh, we also have a number of partners in, who are working in schools, teachers, uh, counselors, librarians who, who are sharing their knowledge and expertise as well. So it really is a collective, collaborative community. Um, and the other nice part about that is it's not on our schedule, right? Slack is something that exists, that it is open all the time. It stores those resources and makes it searchable. Um, we are also starting to get channels kind of in the Slack workspace that are uh, kind of geared towards family needs, right? Gifted and talented learning, ELL learning, uh, school-based work. So we have, we have folks from, you know, groups from specific schools who are working together based on the platform that their school is providing. Um, so it's a very collaborative space. It's a very interesting place to see. I, I think we are excited for that to really continue to grow. We have about 150, 200 users right now. And I think as that number grows, we will see more and more people really interacting with each other. We are also hosting Zoom video uh, meetings three times a week. 
Um, Ariel has been, you know, taking the lead on some of that. And so I don't know, Ariel, you wanna, you wanna share some of that? Sure, yeah. Uh, we have been, I mean, really we set up these Zoom meetings. We host them three times a week, uh, Tuesdays at 11, um, Wednesdays at two and Thursdays at four. Last week we had Superintendent Susana Cordova come on and talk with families about expectations they should have of their schools, which include daily check-ins from their teachers um, and constant and consistent communication from teachers and, and school leadership, which I think was really important for families to hear. Um, but also the space is really a space for families to collaborate around what they're seeing now that remote learning is off and going. So tomorrow we're meeting with a group of um, some of the parents who've been participating for the last two weeks. The last two weeks have really been um, preparing for this remote learning up time. And now we're in the process of helping support them as they build their schedules, as they think about asking correct questions of their teachers. Um, we also, all of our meetings are done in multiple languages. Um, so we're really trying to be a resource for families who might not be um, regularly communicating with their teachers or schools because of learning or uh, language barriers. And so we've really tried to make it an inclusive space for families. We're also checking in with families who we haven't talked to um, very recently um, at a much more rapid cadence than before, just because we want to check and make sure that families have everything that they need to be included in the, the online communities that everyone's trying to build. Um, so we are making over 500 calls a week to families, um, just checking in on them and making sure that they have the food that they need, they have access to technology, um, and that they're connected to our online learning groups. As, as, as community organizers, I think we live by the principle of meet families and community where they're at. And I think that has been a very real uh, driving force behind this. We know families are feeling some panic, that they are feeling the squeeze of the, the environment around us. And I think Calling just to make sure that they are okay has been a, um, a it seems to have been a welcomed um, connect touch point with families um, and also helping again helping them access services access resources has been big. Awesome, thank you. You both are amazing, and your team is doing tremendous work, and we all admire the work that you do. Um, but during these times, it's really hard to get lost in like the confusion. It's to get lost in like, I don't know what's going on and blaming the system or just talking about the difficulties. But we wanted to also highlight as we are doing, you guys highlighting the amazing work that you're doing. Do you have any parents, any students that you wanna highlight that have just gone above and beyond and supporting their families and supporting themselves um, even through this tough time? Yeah, um, the list could go on for a while. I mean, I'll shout out Retha Jenkins um, who has been, helping connect us with a ton of families from PlaceBridge Academy. She's incredible. She's been on every single one of our Zoom calls. Ariel Elliott, John Johnson, Gladys Soto, Sarah Gall, Alma Salas. Um, oh, we've, I mean, I could just keep going, but I, I mean, hi, I hope that, yeah, I mean, they're wonderful. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think, you know, the best part about this is that our families are collaborating with each other. They're sharing resources. Like Gladys is an expert in bilingual education. And we have families in uh, Adams 14 that wanted a bilingual school. Um, and so she's been like supporting them on this bilingual education Slack channel um, and teaching them about like best practices around teaching your student during this time. Um, similarly, we have a librarian, shout out to Janet Damon, who has been posting books um, in our 10 library, which has been really helpful and really cool. A lot of the books that she's been posting um, have been super trauma informed and thoughtful um, pieces for students. And it's been really great to have all of these collaborations amongst all of these different experts. Yeah, the families we work with have really stepped up and kind of shown their own leadership uh, they they've been they've been out talking to neighbors they have been calling people they have been hitting phones sharing information um really asking some really good questions uh and and that's across the board it's not just one group of parents it's not one parent in particular it's it's across the board it's been incredible to be a part of that's great thank you all so much i know it's always hard to highlight everyone that you want to highlight but thank you for doing that and I'm sure those families really appreciate that little shout out. Um, final question that we have for you all is what support do you all need from our community during this time? I think that there's a, a couple of 
things. Um, the first, right now we have um, outstanding computer requests from families that we're trying to fundraise for. Um, so each computer costs us about $115. And right now we have 97 computers that we still need to buy. Um, so anyone that's willing to donate, obviously we're really appreciative. There's a ton of people who need a lot of things right now. Um, but we have a couple of, uh, more than a couple, almost 100 families who need computers um, and don't have them. So if anyone's interested in donating, we are always really appreciative of that. Um, and I think, you know, standing up um, when we see issues of inequity during this time of remote learning is going to be really important, both um, in the organizing work that we're doing and in the policy work that your organizations do. I think that there is also an element of expertise and, and time that, that we would benefit from if, if folks are willing to volunteer. Um, we need to call more families. There are, there are a lot of folks who have not been called. They have not had any communication who are still struggling, who still have dire needs, right? Food, um, energy assistance, a lot of things. We need help hitting the phones. Um, the more, the merrier there. Um, and so if you're interested in that, please reach out to one of us, reach out via of our social media. Um, the other thing is your expertise, right? We, there's a lot of collective wisdom in our community. Um, there's a lot of educate, current educators. There's a lot of former educators. There are a lot of people who have, you know, raised children and understand what it's like to be your child's educator. And we need your help. We need your expertise. And if you want to participate in that and you want to share, or if you all need, you know, our community is diverse in that there are working parents, there are educators, there are people who are now their child's primary educator at home while doing policy work. If you need resources, please, please join our community. Um, reach out to us, get this information for our Slack channel. Hop on, we, we need each other. Um, it's the only way we're gonna get through this is if we collectively do it together. Yeah, you guys should join our Slack channel. Uh, it's, it's like, and invite all your friends. Like, I think that, you know, I mean, all of that information all of that information is available via our website um, for you know those of us who are are new to slack um there's a there's a how to you know ryan nelson did a great job putting together a how to page so that you know those of us who are technology challenged can can get on and engage um we understand that technology is a, a source of inequity um from both accessibility but also understanding and experience uh, and we want to make sure that you know we all have an equal voice that we all are getting our needs met and you know having a platform to to com communicate and connect with each other thank you both again so much um i think especially during this time we really see the importance of community and coming together and really working so i appreciate you both for not only working with the families that you do but also sharing some of your resources um, i want to encourage all our listeners all families i for sure will pass along the information, but um, members, community members can go on your website, which is transformeducationnow.org to get all the information, sign up for Slacks, donate and make sure that kids have the computers that they need so they can access the learning that they need to. But um, just really thank you all so much for being such strong advocates in our community and for helping families. And we will continue to support you. I definitely am in, I'm making phone calls. So let me know. Yeah, thank, thank you, you all so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having us.